The COVID-19 pandemic laid bare the unreadiness of the African continent to uniquely and independently respond with vaccines and treatment. Africa imports more than 99% of its vaccine requirements, so that makes its people extremely vulnerable in times of mass health events like pandemics, when vaccines get diverted to wealthier countries. The Developing Countries Manufacturers Network is hosting its annual general meeting um, uh, under the marquee of the Serum Institute of India in Pune. And part of the discussions pivot around Africa's ability to make and distribute its own drugs. On this, Aspen Pharmacare Senior Executive, Dr. Stavros Nicolau, Afrogen Biologics MD, Professor uh, Petro Terblanche, and Institute Pasteur de Dakar CEO, Dr. Amadou Alpha Sol, uh, are joining us. Thank you very much to all of you and uh, really do appreciate uh, your joining us. I know that those conversations are quite intense and complex, so we appreciate any insight that you will share with us on our program tonight. COVID-19 highlighted the gross vaccine inequality that exists in Africa. We were clearly on the back foot and it's hard uh, at work to change that, it would seem. Stavros, what capabilities do we have right now to source vaccine requirements from African producers and reach a 30% target to do that? Martin, firstly, thanks very much for for having us. Um, it's uh, to be feeling we're all feeling a little nostalgic. We're sitting here in India, and as you say, some very intense and complex conversations going on. Um, there is existing capacity on the continent. Just to answer your question, there's regional manufacturing capability for vaccines um in in southern africa in west africa in northern africa so there is existing capacity and I, I i guess the point that we were making today as african manufacturers in particular is that the um, global procurement mechanisms that lead to the procurement of these vaccines need to be radically reformed and reconfigured in order to enable sustainable uh, production on the continent. There's no use having this capacity and um, you don't get orders or there's very little demand that comes to African production facilities. So one of the key thematics I'm very pleased to report back on was the issue of sustainability and how do we make these facilities on the continent sustainable going into the future. Um, and we are starting to get some inkling that there is encouragement towards reform but i guess iman at the end of the day we've got to be perseverant here and we've got to persevere as african producers to get us to that point where actual physical orders are placed on african producers and we lead to the sustainable production on the continent and if you've got uh, sustainable production we can address our own health security issues as we ought to be doing as a continent well let me extend um the answer a little bit uh, stavros and put this one to petro then given what stavros has just said mm -hmm. how should african countries or how can they partner with other developing nations to pool the resources and research to exponentially grow our capacity and make it a sustainable market Iman, thank you. Before I answer that, I just want to give some statistics, which I think we should very aware, be aware of. 60% of total global vaccines are produced by developing country vaccine manufacturers. Africa doesn't feature there. 1.8 billion doses of COVID-19 vaccines were produced by developing country vaccine manufacturers. African, Africa didn't really feature there. If we look at the world to come, in 2030, 25% of the global population will be people living in Africa. There is, it is unsustainable not to have vaccine manufacturing to prevent disease and to, to ensure health security for that for our population. How do we do that? There are many ways. We have done so much work on regulatory reform. We are doing work on marketplace reform. We are now accessing technologies, not only conventional technologies. And Amado is going to talk about the, 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 the MAC vaccine that his institute is producing since 1937, demonstrating that Africa can produce our own vaccines. We are accessing technologies like mRNA, which is future relevant. We are doing product development and transferring technologies to different countries and companies in Africa. The, the particular program driven from South Africa in Cape Town is transferring technology to five African countries in a way to provide skills, 
capabilities and platforms for vaccine manufacturing. This is the era for African. And what, as, what, what Stavros said earlier, unless we have global procurement reform, it's going to be very difficult to build the sustainable industry in South Africa, in Africa because we're receiving vaccines from the global north. If the procurement systems are not radically transformed to localize procurement, it will be a futile exercise for us to build all this technologies and all this know-how and the capacity. And I mean, it's, it's quite a stunning warning that you share there, Petro, just about our global dependency on vaccines that are not homegrown or not grown on the continent uh, and what the future picture looks like. So this is something, you know, we, we might be a little bit behind in activating with great urgency. Certainly the COVID pandemic taught us that. Uh, Amadou, I want to come to you uh, next and talk about the scope we have as a continent with the frameworks of collaboration that already exist. And we think of things like the African, uh, you know, free, uh, free trade a continental agreement to remedy this deficit. Maybe just before we get to the work that you're pioneering and doing, talk to us a little bit about these, these networks of cooperation that are ready for the using uh, on the African continent, if they indeed are. Yeah, thank you very much for, for having us, Iman. And uh, just uh, about your question, I think there is very important things to understand in the sense that Africa today is moving from having 1% manufacturing on is on ground to 40% by two, to 60% by 2040. And this would be done as part of expanding what exists so far and reinforcing the network we've been talking about, you've been talking about earlier. Very specifically to come to the point that Stavros and Petro has made, first, this would work only if we have some demand that are very specifically supported at the global level to make this manufacturer be in a position to provide more. The second thing is really that cooperation you were mentioning, typically the hub in South Africa for which we are a recipient is this mechanism how through the network, we share knowledge, we share research and we build the capacities and the vaccine we need for the future. This is absolutely critical. We are in different areas with the regional manufacturing building the ecosystem, whether it's regulatory, supply chain, human capital development, to work together in concerted way so the need of the continent can be covered. And our presence here is really to leverage the knowledge and the, the, the network that exists so far and expand it to more international partners from developing countries because the problem are similar and whether it's South, East, West or North or Central Africa, the problem are same. So, Networking is absolutely critical in the continent and beyond, but really tackling the market by having um, this procurement and making sure that we collaborate through knowledge transfer is absolutely key to meet the African needs. Yeah, I mean, and hopefully we have time in this discussion, although I fear we won't, to talk about the specificity of those opportunities uh, around knowledge sharing. I imagine you're doing some of that in Pune already today. But just quickly, before I let you go, Amadou, to the next question, just talk to us about that vaccine pioneering you're doing. Yeah, actually, in, in, in West Africa and Senegal in particular, we've been working on vaccine for now, uh, 1937, as, as reminded by... Um, by Petro, but the reality is we are expanding those capacity to be able to deliver 300 million doses in different platform. And the fact that we are building a very flexible platform that can do different technology and address different needs is really where we leverage innovative technology, both in making filling and finish, but also in making drug substance. The importance of having end-to-end -end manufacturing is critical. And now the whole system in manufacturing is changing due to this new innovative approach. And that's why this work is kind of pioneering and which is really promising for the future. Yeah, it, it certainly sounds like music um, to, you know, to our audience's ears, I'm sure. Stavros, there was vaccine hoarding and there were export restrictions. The death toll uh, in respect of COVID-19 was worse than it should have been. This is a global, not only an African health threat um, and heightens the call for us to get our house in order, isn't it? Yeah, so Iman, you're quite right. I mean, one cannot have a, a global peace and security unless you've got health security. And, and I'm afraid during the COVID pandemic, we saw anything but any attempt to act in solidarity. 
And uh, I think Africa's learned, learned its lesson here. Uh, the rest of the world has hopefully as well. And establishing local manufacturing capacity is critical. But I, I just want to re-highlight a statistic that, that Petra pointed out. And that is that 1.8 billion doses of vaccines were procured by COVAX and not one single dose of those was procured from Africa. African producers such as Aspen set up to produce and we haven't had a single dose. And that is the most fundamental thing that need to, needs to change here. So we need to change the procurement mechanisms. We need a change in the, in the, in the financing and funding uh, mechanisms that are applied to vaccines. You know, Africa often has to compete against uh, jurisdictions and companies uh, on other continents that have received grants. It's very hard to compete. So our presence here um, at this conference, and, and we're in the minority, there are only 10 of us here, I think, um, there's probably about 300 delegates, so we make up a very small percentage. But the African voice has been heard very loud and clear at this conference, and we need this global reform to happen sooner rather than later. And that can only be if we start receiving orders on the African continent for African producers. You know, I'm, I'm thinking about something as all of you are speaking about you know, this being broader than just having that architecture of capability in place. Something has to happen psychologically in the minds of Africans to trust the science from the scientists that are homegrown on the continent, to trust the companies um, that will be manufacturing or leading this charge to exponentially um, grow uh, our manufacturing capabilities. And that sounds to me, you know, as, as if it's a type of work and evangelism, if you will, that has to happen parallel with you know efforts made by people such as yourselves in fora where you are um to change that mindset which will do the thing that you said we should do in the beginning uh, uh, uh stavros and that is create a sustainable market and a sustainable demand petra I, I wonder if you or amadou you as well maybe just have a quick comment on that observation iman advocacy is incredibly important um, we we we've talked about it today. We we sometimes so apologetic about what we can do and what we cannot do. I think it's time for us to be clear. This continent can produce quality vaccines. We've put regulatory in place. We have access to technology. We have the science and technology base to do that. We have the political will, and we will continue to leverage that to do that. But if we don't go the last mile where the people of the continent believe in the quality of the vaccines, the quality and the efficacy of the vaccines that we do, we will also not achieve the target. So advocacy and the role of the media is incredibly important, and we should work together to get the message out to the people of Africa that the last mile is only possible if they take the vaccine. Amadou, you might have a comment on that, but here's my question to you. You know, when I think about the African continent, we've had so many major health events, including the HIV AIDS pandemic. South Africa, for its part, has been at the forefront of some pioneering medicine there. What's missing in expanding this type of approach across other diseases that render the continent particularly vulnerable? Yes, before coming to a question, just I want to reinforce the message that the vaccine is safe. We have been producing pre-qualified vaccines since 1966, and the majority of that vaccine go to African countries. And this has been safe, this has been reliable, and this has been controlling disease. Just this need to be more known by our continents, but the continent really prefer manufacturing that is happening in the continent to build that trust. Now, concerning the, the major advance that has done, been done in the other disease, I want to say that it is moving to other disease also. If you look today, Africa faces every year 120 to 150 epidemics, and in, for which we have a lot of capacity to, to, to actually fight those epidemics, whether it's through developing our own diagnostics or our own therapeutics or our vaccine to control them. So there is knowledge in here. So now probably what we need to do is to expand that to the level that is more impactful. 
Uh, you know, I'm thinking about this, the statistics, um, and I think all of you are very, very alive to uh, the business and, and the market, uh, you know, perspective on all of this. Over a billion people live on the continent uh, right now. That number is going to grow over time. A massive market, if you think about it in commercial terms. If we get that belief right, we get the architecture of manufacturing correct, we get the networks going. Um, this could be this could be a huge, huge market, which can, you know, radically alter this deficit of importing everything we need and, in fact, beginning to export uh, both some of our research and some of the major findings and breakthroughs, as well as uh, some of the drugs that we would possibly be able to produce. Stavros, I'd like you to, to maybe comment on that, about just reframing the opportunity that exists on the continent in this moment to do the things that you're lobbying for doing there where you are. Iman, unfortunately, I'm going to throw another statistic at you. And that at, the, at the moment, Africa represents 17% of the world's population, yet we harbor 27% of the disease burden. Now, when you've got that type of statistic, you should be importing less. In fact, you should be an exporter of medicines and, and vaccines, not an importer. However, we continue to be a chronic uh, importer. We have a trade deficit in pharmaceuticals and medicines that grows year on year. And of course, if we, if we get all of these things that my uh, fellow panelists have uh, spoken about, if we get all of this right, um, and, and it's really just three things, reforming global procurement, um, uh, harmonizing regulatory systems, and sorting out the funding, if you get those three things right, we will make a massive difference to that trade deficit on the continent. Now, trade deficits speak to public health issues, but they also speak to the economics on the continent. And um, if, we, if we produce more on the continent, we create more jobs, the economic value add sits on the continent. Put very differently, Iman, what we've done is, we have outsourced all our volumes to Europe and Asia for them to get the economic benefit and we import everything back into the continent. Mm. Now that has to change and it can change and that's precisely what you have put in perspective. So we're quite excited about the future. Um, I think we've struck the right tone and the right chords here in Pune. We will continue, of course, with the advocacy and uh, advocating for what is right for the continent. The continent must become an exporter, not an importer of medicines into the future. Mm. And a whole other discussion, of course, on IP opportunities and other areas of commercialization in the sector. Thank you to all of you for making the time uh, today to talk to us. We appreciate you. Aspen Pharmacare Senior Executive, Dr. Stavros Nicolau, Afrogen Biologics MD, Professor Petro Terrablanche, and Institute Pasteur de Dakar CEO, Dr. Amadou Alpha Sol. Thank you all.